Hi everyone. Today we will uh, start with module three, that is uh, embedded system components. So uh, we will begin with introduction to embedded systems. So what is an embedded system? So an embedded system is an electronic or electromechanical system designed to perform a specific function and is a combination of both hardware and firmware okay so there are some key points key words here electronic or electromechanical okay so these systems are not just uh, oriented for computation but they are also coupled uh, with mechanical aspects of it so the computation is coupled with mechanical aspects of a system and these are uh, designed to perform a specific function it's it's not like a general purpose computing it is oriented for a specific purpose and it's a combination of both hardware and software it has both hardware and software like a, a firmware is nothing but a software uh, but that doesn't change that quite often okay so that's what is a firmware for example if we take uh, our uh, lift so lift has uh, an embedded system in it so it ha it it's actually the purpose of the lift is not about computation so the purpose of the lift is to take the uh, users right like from one floor to the other so this is a typical example of an embedded system where you have a computing device embedded to a mechanical device so that's the electromechanical uh, system and then the purpose is specific okay you you have to take the user from one floor to the other and it has both hardware and software the hardware uh, includes the mechanical part as well and also the electronic components and the software part the firmware is uh, actually uh, in, in lift uh, particularly these are uh, uh, embedded in a rom so how often do we see uh, the roms being replaced or uh, reflashed right not quite often so that's why they are called firmware okay so these embedded systems are uh, inevitable uh, uh, so they they are uh, kind of ubiquitous you you find them everywhere so you find them in household household appliances telecommunications medical equipments industrial control consumer products and uh, anywhere so you name it so you so this picture gives you a good idea so in, in anywhere right like from our home uh, whatever gadgets that we are using uh, to uh, the big industries uh, and or uh, even the uh, satellites use embedded systems So let's dig deep into the comparison uh, between an embedded system and a general computing system. So first of all, the general computing system, as the name suggests, it is uh, uh, it's designed for a, a, a generic purpose, a general purpose, right? So it has a generic hardware, gen general purpose operating system, uh, the uh, and the use case is also general so anybody should be able to use and many applications are expected to run uh, on that however the embedded system is special purpose like we saw in the lift example so there is a specific purpose for this embedded system and you cannot take the uh, the hardware uh, the electronic components of the lift and put it inside a dvd player right it's it's not uh, quite portable it's, it, it doesn't work that way because it has been designed specifically for that particular application. Second point is uh, general purpose OS has a general purpose operating system and an embedded system it may or may not even have an operating system. Even if it has an operating system it may not be a general purpose operating system but something called as a real time operating system which we will see in uh, the uh, further modules. And in, in many cases, they, there may not be any uh, operating systems also. Third point is applications are alterable or programmable by the user. Like, like uh, a typical example is our uh, laptops or uh, PCs, right? Where you can install your uh, applications and then you can change your applications and use it as you uh, need. But here, as we saw earlier, firmware cannot be altered that easily you still can but it's uh, uh, it's very very rare and it, it takes a big trouble in uh, altering this firmware 
So next point is uh, performance. So in general purpose computing, it's always faster the better, right? So we want more clock speed and it has to be faster and things like that. But in uh, embedded systems, it's not fastest is always the best. It, you don't care about how, I mean, like too fast. Okay, but all you care is whether I can meet my deadline. So if I can meet my deadline, then I'm good enough. Okay, I don't need uh, an extra fast machine. And also, this is also uh, uh, because uh, embedded systems are limited by power. Okay, so most of the embedded systems are handheld devices or battery operated. So these uh, have need, don't need uh, a high performance. As long as you can do your job well, it is fine, but you have to conserve as much power as possible. Fifth point is less or not tailored towards reduced operating power uh, requirements, options for different power settings like we see in our laptops or uh, PCs, right? You can have a high performance mode or battery saver mode and things like that. However, in embedded systems, you always have, you always, it's kind of, uh, uh, you operate at battery saver mode or power saving mode. And sixth point, response time is not critical. And uh, here response time is critical with hard deadlines. It may not be always hard deadlines, but deadlines are definitely there for embedded systems. For example, if you are in a lift, right, uh, then you click on a button. Uh, you are expected to, uh, you expect the lift to start processing it and then take you to the floor uh, in a short span of time. It, it cannot take forever. It, I mean, it shouldn't be like uh, uh, our laptops. Suddenly you click a button and then it goes, okay, installing updates and then it starts circling, right? So it shouldn't do that, right? So, I mean, you, response time in that case, it's okay. You can just uh, force shut down your laptop and it's fine. But in, in the lift, you don't need that. Even here, it's not a hard deadline. Okay, I'll give you an example of a hard deadline. So in automotive uh, example, really cars. Cars, the ABS, the braking system uh, is an embedded system. So now if you apply the brakes, you want the car to stop immediately. There you cannot have like, oh, okay, I'm going to install updates now. You, you can't have those kind of uh, bad response time. So in that that leads to catastrophic uh, uh, incidents like a, a loss of human life or property, right? So a, a another example is uh, flights. It's even more critical there. So so things like that. So response time is very very critical. The, the moment you say landing gears down, the landing gears should be down. Or the moment you say your flaps up, your flaps should be up. So things like that. And finally, you have uh, execution behavior. Uh, need not be uh, deterministic like we saw earlier right so you 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 don't know there is no guarantee in a general purpose system where uh, when you when you click on something I means suddenly the, the system can become undeterministic like you and you are okay with it all you need to do is to control alt tell and then restart your system and you'll be fine you, you don't you don't mind that too much but here that is not the case okay so the execution behavior must be deterministic if, if i press a button three i have to go to third floor Okay, in the lift. If I press three and if if it takes me to five, that's not what it is intended for, right? So here the execution behavior is very very deterministic. Now let's look at uh, the history of embedded systems. So uh, the embedded systems uh, existed even before the IT revolution. In fact, it existed uh, even uh, uh, before the semiconductor uh, uh, revolution. So the early embedded systems were built using uh, vacuum tubes and uh, later uh, they started using transistors. So uh, one of the earliest uh, uh, embedded systems uh, or the first recognized modern embedded system is the uh, Apollo uh, uh, guidance computer, AGC. Okay. So you may not know AGC as such, but uh, so this was uh, the computer that took uh, man uh, to the moon so you see all the apollo missions right so the apollo uh, uh, missions the the, the entire uh, uh, modules the uh, the command module that uh, that uh, uh, revolves around the moon uh, that's that uh, and then also the uh, lunar uh, excursion module that uh, landed on the moon all of these uh, used this apollo guidance computer 
So, uh, uh, so, so, so it, it, it was a very basic system though. Uh, so, uh, so the, uh, it only had the initial version of the AGC only had 4K uh, words ROM. Okay. And uh, to only 256 words RAM. And later, uh, the later versions, uh, it had 36K and uh, 2K of ROM and uh, RAM respectively. And it ran on a, a one uh, megahertz clock. Uh, and that one megahertz clock was generated from a, a, a two megahertz crystal. Okay. And uh, it only had 11 instructions and it was a 16 bit computer. Okay. So uh, you can imagine how uh, uh, basic uh, uh, it was. And uh, however, it, it had like around 5000 ICs. Uh, it was supplied by uh, Fairchild Semiconductors and using these components, right? So, uh, uh, so the, the, the entire Apollo uh, guidance computer was uh, uh, assembled. And it also had a user interface unit uh, it's called as DSKY. Uh, it uh, stands for Display Keyboard. So it's called Display Keyboard Unit. So along with this interface unit, uh, your uh, Apollo Guidance computer uh, looked like this. Okay. So this is uh, this has the keypad and, and the display, and uh, it looks like a a, a large size uh, calculator at the best, right? So but still, so uh, but we we used this uh, to uh, uh, travel to the moon and then come back. So it's uh, very interesting. So this was done uh, in the year. Uh, so AGC, the initial version of AGC came uh, at around uh, 1963. And our first lunar mission uh, uh, where man landed on moon was in 1969. So from from 63 onwards, so we we had uh, a, a very good uh, robust uh, uh, embedded systems in place. Now let's look at uh, classification of embedded systems. So embedded systems uh, are, are classified into four uh, based on uh, the generation, uh, the complexity and performance requirements, uh, whether it's deterministic or not, and uh, whether uh, how, what kind of triggering it, uh, it has. Uh, so let's look at this deterministic uh, behavior and uh, triggering. So deterministic behavior versus non-deterministic. So earlier we saw how, how important it is for a deterministic system, right? Uh, in an embedded system. Uh, even then, like not all embedded systems uh, mandate uh, this deterministic behavior. Some need not have. For example, uh, there may be uh, some speech-based uh, uh, embedded systems that uh, can afford to lose certain packets. So you may ha you may hear distorted voice. Uh, but still it's it's okay so it's kind of a non deterministic you have you are losing some packets but uh, i mean this is true especially if you are using uh, 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 the the udc uh, protocol right so you you will have loss of uh, packets but uh, you uh, you are still okay with it you can manage but however uh, so th this is an example of non deterministic but, but most of the embedded systems uh, are uh, need to be deterministic like we said, it, it cannot afford to be wrong. Like uh, again, the lift example, if if we are, if we want to go to a particular floor, we have to go to that floor, and we, we I mean it, the system cannot uh, uh, say, oh, okay, no, I cannot, right? So that's about it. And uh, so there's also something called as a hard versus soft execution behavior. So this is uh, something like uh, uh, so all all embedded systems uh, are driven by deadlines. Uh, like I said uh, in the lift example, if you if you press a particular floor, uh, it has to take you to a particular floor. But you don't have like a hard deadline saying it has to take you to a floor uh, in the next uh, uh, 30 seconds. You don't you don't have that kind of a deadline, right? And or or it has to start uh, the lift has to start uh, within like few uh, microseconds or milliseconds. You don't have that hard uh, deadline uh, for a lift. However, uh, if you if you take uh, the ABS uh, or the, the uh, uh, gear uh, system or autopilot system in, in their flights, uh, so they are a hard deadline or a nuclear power reactor, right? So the, the embedded systems used in those, uh, they are hard uh, uh, real time systems. And uh, finally, you have a, a triggering. So based on trigger, right? So these systems are reactive systems where uh, you react to something. 
so either the 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 uh, reaction can be based on an event or it can be based on a time okay so once in every uh, uh, several uh, milliseconds or microseconds you you actually uh, update or you do some kind of a computing or uh, in an event based uh, uh, event triggered systems it could be based on an event so when you when you actually press a button then you do something or when when your sensor input uh, is something then you you take an action so something like that so based on generation embedded systems are uh, classified as first generation second generation third generation or fourth generation so the first generation was 8 bit microprocessor or 4 bit microcontrollers so these were the early uh, uh, digital uh, telephone keypads uh, and also your stepper motor control units the second generation you had a uh, 16 bit microprocessor or 8 bit uh, microcontrollers and uh, so there you have your DACs. DACs are your data acquisition systems, right? Where you can connect it to, uh, uh, you can connect the DACs uh, to a board and you can measure these signals, uh, any signal that's of our interest. And also the supervisory uh, control and data acquisition, SCADA. So SCADA systems are uh, the control systems that are used in uh, uh, like large scale industries or power plants. Right, so th those are so the, the automations that we uh, see in uh, large factories uh, use SCADA systems. In the third generation, we have powerful 32-bit uh, microprocessors or 16-bit microcontrollers. So these are the uh, uh, digital signal processors that came into uh, the market. So these are DSPs and also the ASICs. Uh, application specific uh, integrated circuits so that that started uh, out the revolution in uh, uh, robotics and other media and uh, uh, other process control and uh, fourth generation uh, we had uh, the advent of system on chips so you had an entire uh, system on uh, fabricated in one small chip uh, so typical example is our smartphones where you have your modem system, camera module, uh, audio, uh, everything, audio device and all these uh, uh, systems are part of one chip. And uh, it also uh, uh, led to the advent of uh, reconfigurable processors or the FPGAs, right, field programmable gate arrays and uh, so many of the mobile internet devices everything so uh, so uh, all these belong to fourth generation now what's next so uh, do we have a fifth generation so we are all talking about uh, the internet of things uh, and things like that where every every uh, device or a thing is smart you you can name a device and that device can you can call it a smart smart lights uh, smart home uh, and, 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 and several other smart uh, things, right? We are even calling smart cities. And all these things are, uh, uh, again, uh, uh, rooted at uh, the embedded uh, system. Based on uh, complexity and uh, performance, uh, our embedded systems can be uh, small, small scale, uh, medium scale, or large scale. Uh, so this, this is, uh, these are just, uh, uh, different scales of complexity not like for, for example non-critical uh, performance requirements like uh, uh, calculators or uh, some digital watches so so these are example of small scale applications so they may not have operating system and uh, they are cheap also uh, low cost and uh, the medium scale uh, embedded systems are slightly complex so for example this your lift or uh, uh, microwave oven uh, these uh, are, are some typical examples they may or may not have operating systems uh, even we can have, have digital TVs right so these can be uh, called as uh, uh, medium scale uh, embedded systems um, and finally the large scale embedded systems are uh, highly complex hardware uh, so uh, the, the hardware are complex like uh, so here uh, the criticality is also there, like automotive systems and uh, uh, flight uh, uh, automation and uh, satellite uh, 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 devices and uh, systems. Uh, so these are some examples. So, so in this, uh, particularly, you also focus on uh, 
the, uh, the the media encoding and decoding of media for concise memory uh, and uh, and also security uh, through uh, use of cryptographic functions so so these kind of uh, uh, features are required for these uh, large scale systems so these are some of the application areas of embedded systems so we already saw in, uh, in, in one of the earlier slides right where we apply embedded systems so uh, so they are used uh, almost everywhere so anything that we use now uh, uh, have embedded system in it for example consumer electronics we have camcorders cameras in household appliances we have television dvd player washing machine fridge microwave oven and in home automation systems you have uh, uh, air conditioners sprinklers intruder detection and then your cctvs fire alarms in automotive industry you have your anti-lock braking systems which we saw earlier and then engine control ignition systems uh, your cars for example have around like uh, 100 to 1000 uh, uh, embedded systems like microcontrollers in it so those those so that's how uh, 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 like important the embedded system is uh, so and then uh, we have telecom uh, telecommunication industry where we have cell phones uh, telephonic switches handset multimedia application etc and uh, computer peripherals like printer scanner fax machines computer networking system routers switches uh, hubs firewalls and your healthcare uh, uh, systems like you have your scanners eeg ecg and things like that and uh, measurement and automate uh, instrumentation uh, you have your digital uh, multimeters cro's logic analyzers plc's and uh, your banking and retail your atms uh, currency counters points of scales and your card readers your barcode reader uh, smart card reader handheld devices uh, all these uh, things so you so like uh, 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 like i said earlier uh, embedded systems are uh, ubiquitous you can now find lots of places where uh, it, it's actually very hard to find a place uh, where we don't use uh, embedded systems so embedded systems are designed for different purposes so we'll quickly look at uh, uh, each of them so the first one is data collection storage uh, representation so here uh, acquisition of data from external world so first you collect the data right the embedded system first needs some kind of an input so all these input uh, are collected as data and either they are processed directly or they are stored uh, so the storage can be uh, permanent or temporary uh, so uh, it, it, it can, or it can be stored in this system itself or it is transferred to some other uh, system uh, so, uh, for example, in, if it is stored in this particular system, then it, it can be stored uh, temporarily. For example, you take digital TVs, uh, you just uh, you you display uh, something on the screen and then you, you switch to the next frame. You forget about the previous frame, right? So, uh, so, so something uh, like that. So, you, you don't need uh, uh, the previous frame data anymore. So, it can be overwritten. Or uh, the other example is, uh, I mean, for a permanent storage, the example is digital cameras. So you take a picture and then you store the picture, right? Or you take a video and then you take a video and store it in, uh, you need a storage in the system itself. Or it can be, uh, the data can be transferred to others. Like for example, uh, CROs, right? So you uh, you measure something and then uh, you, you actually output that to uh, the screen or you can you can actually transfer the uh, data to some other uh, storage device and you delete it later you don't you don't keep you don't have any storage uh, 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 in these kind of systems and finally we have this representation so representation is something like the data uh, is finally represented in some form to the user so uh, a typical example is again digital tv and digital cameras right so you have you process the data but you sh also you show it or you represent it to the user in in, in uh, the user understandable manner so that's the purpose of the system itself so uh, yeah, like our tvs and cameras the next part is the data communication so you have uh, uh, communication is uh, one of the uh, most essential parts of the embedded system uh, so we we have two types of communication it's it can be like a very simple uh, home network uh, uh, system uh, the routers that we use are uh, two highly advanced uh, 
a satellite communication system so it uh, so so in all ranges you have this so you have two types of uh, uh, communication system one is uh, using wireless and the other one is wired so in wireless you have bluetooth zigbee wi-fi uh, edge gprs etc and in wired uh, you have rs232 uh, usb tcp ip ps2 etc the next is uh, data or signal processing so in data or signal uh, processing uh, what you do is you this uh, these embedded systems focus more on the the processing itself so they they rely on real time uh, data to process uh, examples include uh, your speech coding uh, your synthesis uh, audio video codec and then transmission applications all these things so these are the streaming data okay so for example your digital uh, hearing aid or your uh, the the speech from your microphone to the speakers right so so these are uh, some of the examples of uh, streaming data and uh, the next part is uh, monitoring so these are the embedded systems that uh, uh, monitors uh, certain data for example or uh, eeg or ecg uh, so the we use some sensors uh, to uh, monitor some uh, data like heartbeat or uh, some uh, pulses uh, something like that or or even uh, voltage and current through i mean uh, so we have your cro's and digital multimeters where we monitor uh, the voltage or current right so uh, so these these devices are uh, 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 specifically uh, used for monitoring certain data then we have our control systems so uh, so these control systems are uh, those that uh, uh, based on a certain uh, sensor input you uh, uh, you actually uh, determine whether to uh, 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 take an action or not okay so they use sensors to collect these inputs and then they use actuators to uh, 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 to actually uh, 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 do some kind of an action so sensors uh, typical examples include temperature sensor right if you take uh, air conditioner systems uh, your, te your temperature is uh, the uh, input and uh, the output is uh, it will generally be like a relay where you you kind of uh, uh, you, you change the, the resistance or something so that your temp you, you allow uh, more cool air to flow or you control the airflow so something like that okay so the actuators will typical examples includes relays motors and things like that uh so here we see uh, the air conditioner uh, example so one one is uh, uh, the the normal uh, uh, ones that we use at homes uh, the other one is is the hv acs uh, these are very important uh, so so i just want to showcase show you uh, guys this so that you know the impact uh, of uh, uh, controlling the temperature right so these hv acs are used in uh, big industries and also in server rooms right like for if you have you know, for example you have uh, uh, like google server or amazon server so these servers uh, will be uh, physically there in some warehouses so there you uh, you have a, a huge array of uh, or racks of uh, systems and that generates lot of heat uh, so you need to have these hvacs to control the temperature and uh, to give you a, like a scale right so this picture the third picture here uh, so you can see the scale of these uh, uh, HVACs so how big these are so these small small dot, dots are uh, the people here so it's that big okay so it's uh, it's uh, these are huge systems that control huge uh, infrastructures and the next one uh, we have the application specific user interface and this is very very important okay so any embedded system should have set of input devices and set of output devices so only then you can interact with the outside world so input devices generally include these buttons switches keypad touchpad microphone camera etc and in, uh, output uh, devices uh, include your led lcd speakers vibration alert and others okay so this brings us to the end of this uh, lecture on uh, introduction to embedded systems uh, so hope you uh, uh, learned something useful in this uh, uh, lecture uh, so we'll see you next time thank you